Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And uh, I've got a good one for you today because people are racing to get cash out of the banks. And uh, there's a lot to cover. And uh, before I get into it, please take a second. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Today we've got a sponsor, Patriot Gold, which I'll talk about a little later. But let's get into it right away. Right now, we are seeing a rush of people that are moving out of regular investments and into cash. There's that, but there's also people that are pulling their cash out of the bank at record levels that we haven't seen since before the pandemic. And uh, the crazy thing about this is that, you know, a lot of people don't realize that cash is an, it is an asset class. It's an investment class. You know, people are into cash, people are into stocks, people are into bonds. And uh, you need to look at having cash right now because of everything that's happening uh, with the global economy. And uh, Michael Hartnett, who is the chief economist over at Bank of America, is talking about how people are starting to realize that there are problems that are going to be long term. And again, this is a conservative guy. He's kind of a bear guy who thinks that you should pace yourself when it comes to your investments. But one thing about this guy that's great is that he's not, you know, oh, everything's going to be great. It's not to worry. He's known for, you know, putting the brakes on things. And, uh, you know, one thing I like entering the montage from different areas and just seeing these places to sit, places to be by yourself at this resort. Again, this place is insane. You know, room started, I think, at $1,000 a night. And uh, there's so much of this place that you can enjoy for free. Speaking of free, the party. Everybody that filled out uh, a, uh, you know, to get in the drawing for the party, those invitations are going out right now. So check your spam filter and I hope you're going to join us because it's, you know, we had thousands of people that filled out the, uh, uh, for the drawing. Only a couple hundred can make it. It's going to be great. You've got the hotel details, all that stuff. It's going to be absolutely fantastic, but check your spam filter. And for those people that said that they couldn't make it, we replaced them. We drew other people that could potentially take their spot. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be absolutely sold out. There's no shame to swing by and stop by the theater. No, not going to get in. So check your spam filter. Now, again, one thing that we have talked about in great detail is having cash on hand. And again, for those of you that have you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in the bank, you're not going to go and get 300 grand and put it in your, uh, your mattress. That's not the idea with this. The idea with this is to have, you know, extra cash in case there's an emergency. Now, if you don't think that things are getting worse, you're kidding yourself. One of the largest lenders in the world is Wells Fargo Bank. I've made it really clear that I think that they're Hells Fargo. I think that they're just a joke. And I think that they could care less about customer service, to say the least. But one of the largest mortgage lenders on the planet is Wells Fargo. Their largest, most reliable thing with the company to make money has been mortgages. Think about this right now, because this number is absolutely staggering that I had to verify it you know, to make sure it was right. They're only in the pipeline. And think about this. If you are in the mortgage business, if you are in the home improvement business, if you're in any business that relies on customers to potentially do business with you, fill something out to where you call them to maybe get a loan or maybe do a home improvement or you know anything like that, you have a pipeline. You have a pipeline of leads and you have a pipeline of existing customers that you're working on to potentially close the deal. In all of Wells Fargo right now, the entire mortgage um, uh, banking industry for the company of Wells Fargo in the United States, there are only 13,000 loans in the entire company right now in the pipeline. 13,000 loans. Now, if you were a smaller lender, that would be great. But that number is down 90%, 90% of what they normally have right now. Isn't that crazy? So, oh, the mortgage business is great. Oh, the housing market's good. No, 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 guys. This is it. This is the end of it all right now. Now, the thing about this is that any realtor that is worth their weight in, in anything from experience to uh, honesty, let's just start with that, is going to tell you that now is not a good time. Now is the time to get out 
if someone will buy your house, kiss them and, and, and get out of the house because loans are not happening. People are not being able to refinance their house. People are not buying homes at any regular pace right now. Yes, there's a cash buyers and yes, there's rich people in the world that don't care about stuff like this. But if you think that the world can survive and your business can survive on that, you're out of your mind because for Wells Fargo to only have 13,000 loans going on right now is absolutely catastrophic. It is their largest thing to get other business. Now, think about this. I had a friend of mine that opened up an Allstate agency and I was fascinated with how they did the franchise and how they set them up and the classes and everything. But think about this. If we, you know, their whole thing was we start with the biggest door in the house and then we get everything in your life. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Well, if we can get your auto loan, we can get your home insurance, we can get your life insurance. And that was Allstate's theme. Well, that's what Wells Fargo's theme is, is that if we start with a mortgage, we're going to be able to lead to other areas that we're going to be able to uh, uh, get financing, get banking, get credit lines, credit cards, everything like that. And eventually, if they just didn't have such horrible customer service and try to stick things down your throat and overcharge you with fees, they would be a good bank. But anyways, that's their problem. So anyways, Wells Fargo's not writing the mortgages that they used to. Interest rates are only going to go up right now. We're going to see things hit a level that we've never seen in our lifetimes. You know, I spoke to a friend of mine, Dave, yesterday, who's a really sharp guy who retired from the grocery industry. And he's here in Southern California and he knows the area really well. And we were talking about different businesses in, in the grocery chain and things that, that um, you know, he experienced. And, he, and this is a guy that, again, started in the warehouse, worked his way up through companies and eventually retired, but knew inside and out, you know, different uh, store chains and everything that happened with it. And it was fascinating because as I was telling him things I knew, he was adding things to it to talk about how people don't realize through time that businesses that we never thought would go out of business are going to go out of business. And that happened in the grocery business. It's going to happen in the banking industry. Again, you're going to see mergers happen and they're going to say it's going to make a stronger bank. Well, no, it's going to be out of necessity. And over the summer, there was a uh, banking story between the banking industry that one of the big four banks was in serious financial trouble. This situation with the mortgages cannot help these people. It cannot make it better. It cannot make it something that's going to be um, solvable in any way because interest rates are only going to go up. With what the Fed just did, you're going to see mortgages go up dramatically. Now, here in Southern California, there's a tremendous amount of construction and um, real estate uh, speculation and flipping and things like that. The thing that you do with this generally is you go out to the bank and you get a construction loan and you get an interest only loan. When they were 2%, when they were 3%, you may pay a little higher rate. You're going to do this for 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, but inevitably with construction, anybody who is real and is not delusional realizes that there's problems. You don't want to have problems. You don't want to have any construction delays, but sometimes you don't have labor. Sometimes you don't have, uh, uh, you know, uh, things, supply problems with dishwashers and with granite and with, you know, fixtures and all the stuff that's been compounded over the last, you know, two years. It's not getting better right now. So these loans right now, and I'm getting this stuff sent to me because people are like, oh yeah, you know, we're a lender. You know, Dan, if you ever want to talk about us, we'd love it. Everybody would like that. The point is, is that these lenders are lending hard money to where no documentation, no uh, verification, you know, uh, interest only payments of eight and a half percent. Guys, this is skyrocketed it's three and four times what it was six months ago. So again, if you're an experienced builder, you know, you build time into things you know when there's going to be issues but the people that are not that think that they ah, i can flip a house i can do it so simple those are the people that are going to be stuck and be stuck um, with a bankruptcy festival so you're going to see things that we've never seen before but look at what happened with wells fargo 
Wells Fargo only has 13,000 loans and it's done. It's absolutely finished. International Monetary Fund steps forward in the last week and a half and says that this recession is going to be so much worse than we anticipated. Well, thank you. And again, you know, there's a lot of different names for the International Monetary Fund. And one of them is Mafia, International Mafia Fund. But the point is, is that all these warnings are taking place. People are getting scared. People are taking cash out. But don't worry. The stock market's great. Everything's good. You know, people don't have a care in the world right now. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. Let me know what you guys think about this. And uh, people are warming up for their yoga class this morning. Isn't that nice? So let me know what you guys think about this. Let's talk about our sponsor, Patriot Gold Group. You know, right now, Wall Street's fear gauge is flashing a warning sign. And the warning sign is that stocks could crash at any time. Now, the average person has lost money this year with their 401k or IRA. You need a hedge. And what billionaires are talking about right now is you need to get yourself into physical metals with an IRA or 401k from Patriot Gold. Now, think about this. The Fed's plan to raise interest rates to end inflation is only going to do one thing. It's going to make things worse when it comes to the stock market. You have to look at this. They're going to crash stocks. They're going to crash real estate. And you need to protect yourself during this time. If you call 888-330-1431 today, you can get a free investor guide from Patriot Gold. And it's no obligation to find out about an IRA or 401k that's backed by physical metals. You have to look at an alternative. Goldman Sachs just announced that they think that gold could hit $2,250 an ounce. You need to be part of this. You need to get your investments in order so that you can take advantage of this when it does shoot up. Gold has stood the test of time as a hedge against a downturn in the economy. Experts also say that there is a 100% chance that we're heading towards a recession. Protect yourself today. Get an IRA or 401k from Patriot Gold before it's too late. Call 888-330-1431 today and let them know that I allegedly sent you and take a look at Patriot Gold today. We are seeing problems for the average person get exacerbated, but it's not just in one region or one area. It is worldwide. Think about this. The average person, they just did a brand new survey that just came out a week ago, and that is how much debt do people have? Well, the average person here in the United States has $25,139 in additional debt that they've taken on. Again, horrible, guys, absolutely horrible. Uh, almost 50% of these people do not have $1,000 set aside for an emergency fund if something goes wrong. So if they had the car break down, if they had something happen in the home or something like that, or, you know, again, kids in sports that they needed money for, they would be in deep trouble. Now, it's crazy because this story popped up out of the UK as well, is that people are trying to save money right now, but the average person doesn't have a thousand pounds in the UK. Uh, for an emergency fund. So this is happening around the globe. You're going to see, you know, a money crisis. You're going to see a bill crisis right now where people cannot afford to pay their bills right now. It's just happening. I'm always warning people about banking and about clicking on scams and things like that. Um, someone I work with was talking about how they're just getting a rash of text messages and emails lately about how hey, verify this and your Amazon purchase and your Wells Fargo, um, you know, account has been uh, compromised. Only problem is the guy doesn't have a Wells Fargo account, but people still click on this stuff, which, which absolutely floors me. You don't have an account at that bank, but you would compromise your safety by clicking on this stuff. There is a woman out of Cleveland who wrote a check for a magazine subscription for $28. Thieves got a hold of that check because she dropped the check into a drop box and the check was stolen. And once the check was stolen, the thieves went and got rid of the, um, the amount and changed it to $7,000 and changed the name of the pay from the magazine subscription 
to some individual she didn't know. But the only problem was she didn't find this out until she got her bank statement. So watch your accounts, check your accounts, schedule your accounts, do yourself a favor and send a warning, you know, check the account, check the account, because you want to make sure that if there's any excess uh, or excessive uh, withdrawals or anything like that, you, you know, you have a better chance of fighting it if you figure it out now over waiting uh, till the end of the month and getting your statement. So many people make that mistake. So the bad guys are out there and the bad guys are getting smarter and they're getting more courageous and they're doing more things on a daily and weekly basis. So absolutely, you know, it's amazing the ingenuity of a criminal. It really is. I mean, uh, that's the one thing. When I wrote and uh, I would research crimes and things like that, I was always fascinated at the extent that someone would go to rob someone and uh, uh, steal someone with white collar crimes especially. Well, this type of stuff right now, guys, this is crazy. These people that do this, it's just absolutely amazing. And it's only going to get worse as people get more desperate. So watch everything financially. You have to. This is on you. The problem with it is that Bank of America is now telling people when they're inside the banks, hey, beware of fraud. When they do transactions at the tellers, beware of fraud. Don't click on anything uh, untoward that you don't know. If you're not sure, don't click on it and call us because we're not going to pay that. They're warning people now. So if you think that you're going to make some mistake and send somebody $13,000 again on Zelle, th those days are done, guys. They're not doing that. And have you been victim of this stuff? Have you seen this stuff? I love when people send me things like this because it's, it's just too much right now. So we're getting warning after warning after warning from billionaires right now talking about how we're heading into a much darker time. I, I look at this stuff, guys. I'm, I'm really fascinated by all this stuff. Let me get a good shot of this. The waves are really big today. It's really, 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 really nice out there. Absolutely amazing. Now, a couple of business heavyweights stepped forward this week and gave different warnings. And both of these I took to heart because one of them is Martin Sorrell, who runs the advertising behemoth. He founded it, uh, HPP, and now he runs S4 Capital. Now, the thing about this guy is that being in the advertising industry, when you look at major brands, and I'm talking Coca-Cola, Airlines, General Motors type stuff, Ford, and I have no idea if they even represent those companies, but I'm talking about major companies like that because that's what they handle. People are cutting back with everything, uh, with print, with newspapers, with uh, print media of all types, magazines, everything, but they're doing it in other ways, other alternatives also. They're cutting back with TV. They're cutting back with radio. They're cutting back with online advertising. He sees a problem globally to where you're going to see issues because of the Ukrainian war, you're going to see issues uh, because of the supply chain problems that's only going to get worse. And it's something that the Fed can do whatever it wants. This problem is going to get exacerbated with a supply chain issue, which is fascinating. And then you've got uh, 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 Luke Ellis, who started the man group. And Luke is talking about how this is going to be much worse. People need to look at this time right now because it's going to be different than other recessions that we've lived through. Now, think about this, the depression that nobody wants me to compare anything to was not something that just lasted a short period of time. It took World War II for us to get out of that completely. I think that we're heading into a time right now that is going to be catastrophic when it comes to uh, layoffs. Both of these men mentioned layoffs. And the one thing I forgot to mention about the Wells Fargo thing earlier is there's going to be massive layoffs at these banks. Wells Fargo is the first one to talk about how they're cutting staff more than they anticipated. They've already cut thousands of people and they're going to cut even more because the mortgage industry is done. It's finished. Now, the people, the, you know, the codgers that are out there, they're writing, I had a mortgage at 10% down. It was great. Your house then was $42,000. Okay. Cars cost more than that, sir. So I kind of remind people of that and they don't want to hear that. So, it's a different world right now. 
the average house at $435,000. It's dramatic how bad it's going to be for the real estate market. And this is going to affect everything. It's going to affect home improvements. It's going to affect purchasing. It's going to affect shopping. It's going to affect retail. It's going to affect insurance. It's going to affect absolutely everything around us right now. So all you can do is get ready right now. And again, look at the stories below. I don't just make this stuff up. This is all based on facts and based on different things. And I think that there's, you know, over a dozen places that we are referring to in this video alone. So let me know what you think about this, because I think that today, this is the good times, guys. Enjoy it. You know, yeah, high prices on food, uh, you know, vegetables. Uh, we ran to uh, Taco Bell yesterday and uh, to eat something unhealthy. It was great. Two people, Taco Bell, $27, guys. $27 at Taco Bell. Huh? Things are $5 now there. Things are not $1.49. It's insane how expensive life is. What do you do when you have kids? What do you do when you have four kids? Seriously, you don't go to Taco Bell. I'll tell you that right now. So share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys, because it's gotten so expensive to eat out. It's gotten so expensive to, um, to survive, to pay for things. You have to have insurance. You have to have uh, you know, a car that runs well. And to maintain things like that has gotten completely, you know, out of control. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. Now, with all this uncertainty when it comes to real estate and interest rates and everything, rents are still sky high. Uh, eventually, rents are going to have to drop just like the real estate prices are going to have to drop. But we're starting to see things still be insane. I had a story sent to me out of Australia. I get a kick out of Australia because their rents are based on a weekly rate and landlords are still doing crazy things right now. Person in uh, uh, Brisbane uh, had their rent at $450 a week. The landlord raised it to $750 a week, 60% increase. Now, again, that's insane. It's, you know, unrealistic. The average person can't afford it. The landlord, you know, deserves a spot in hell and uh, we'll get a medal when they get there. But, the problem with this is that you're starting to see this, you know, all over the place. You're starting to see landlords with their one last shot just to gouge people. You don't like it? Don't live here. And again, it won't always be like this, but it is a problem. And we're seeing this um, around the globe. I wish it just wasn't Australia and these poor people that are experiencing this. It's happening all over the place. Uh, the next thing is that JP Morgan wants to get in the rental business. JP Morgan has a new platform for landlords called Story, which is a horrible name for a business like that, but they're going to call it Story. And what Story is going to do for landlords is that landlords are going to plug into this program and it's going to take care of everything, qualifying your tenants, collecting the rents, telling you what vacancy rates are, if you should raise the rents, everything through one app, through Story. And again, this will only keep prices up for a while, but eventually you have to have the human element of empathy and understanding that, hey, you know what? I really can't charge somebody $750 a week for this shack and uh, I've got to give them a better uh, rate. So until that time, uh, JP Morgan wants to get in the rental business. And again, you're going to see companies go out and do things. I asked this guy if I could ride on the lawnmower and he's already turned me down twice. So I'll try to get away from that for you guys. Can I ride it again? Okay, well, anyways. Um, so, share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys. But the landlord business, it's a tough business right now. All these retail places that are going out of business, even in this luxury town. One thing I'm excited about is people coming to town, you know, for the party next week. And uh, you're going to see a luxury area that's been decimated with the uh, uh, retail problem. So, share your thoughts on all this stuff. And again, anybody that has crazy rental experiences, let me know about this stuff. I love hearing about this stuff. I love hearing about your banking issues. I love to share them with everybody. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of time. So, you know, a couple of things a subscriber sent to me. First one is Shane. His Honda was not running that well. Takes it in to get fixed. 
and they say, oh, it's a shifter cable. Need a new shifter cable. Inexpensive, simple fix. Only problem is they don't have shifter cables right now. They have to order it. They don't know when they're going to get it. So lucky Shane, the supply chain strikes again against him. One thing that we did uh, when the health crisis started was we started to help people get uh, supplies and things like that that they needed for their business, for manufacturing. I'm telling you guys, if you have a way of doing that and helping people, especially auto parts, construction supplies, things like that, you can make yourself a fortune doing that. And then there's Shirley. Shirley writes me, she's a third grade teacher from Coral Gables uh, in the Miami era. And she's talking about how, Dan, it's absolutely sad because these kids are being sent to school with, with uh, meals that are not nutritious in any way, shape or form, and it's falling off a cliff. Kids that are getting donuts, kids that the mom is buying a Costco hot dog and cutting it in half and giving the kid half a hot dog. Now, I understand when people get broke, they have to do desperate things, but this is terrible, guys. This is bad. You want to talk about a great economy right now? It's horrific. Joseph Dreamhouse, Fran Glover, who runs that, who is a saint, who, who's coming to the party, but she has this issue all the time, guys, when it comes to uh, getting nutritious meals to people, and the government's not helping, donations are down, and even in wealthy Florida, yes, there's bad parts in every state, but in wealthy Florida, in Coral Gables, kids are not getting nutritious meals, and it's sad. I'm going to finish this video with these last couple stories. And the first thing is, this is a story that you're going to hear more and more and more of. And that is that 45% of the people in Texas cannot afford to pay their energy bills right now. That is catastrophic. That is horrific because what if we have a winter like we had last year in Texas? Okay, that's what all the experts say is going to happen. Only they're saying it's going to be worse this time. So if that's the case, you're going to see people freeze to death. And this is horrific because they won't be able to pay their bills. And these energy companies are going to shut them off. Do your best not to have those smart meters that are controlled by somebody else. You want to be able to control the thermostat inside your own home. Now, final thing is there is a wealthy guy that owns a huge car collection and is selling it, unloading it for $45 million. Now you can sit there and say, oh, gee, I wish I had that problem. What does this guy know in the world? What does this guy know about how bad things are that he wants to unload 18 vehicles for $45 million? That should be the question. The, this guy went to Sotheby's and said, I'm well known. I don't want my name out there. I don't want anybody to talk about this, but here's the, the cars that are for sale. And I'm sure that there's wealthy people that know that that's, you know, Johnny's collection or, or Steven or whoever, but out of London, that's where this guy's at. And it's a $45 million collection that he's unloading. So again, sign of the times, watch what rich people do, because that's where you need to, to put your money. If they're getting out of something, get out of it. Okay. It's that simple. High end cars. Okay. This is not some guy that financed this stuff. It, you know, look at that. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, please, if you guys have been invited to the party, check your spam filter. A lot of people are coming. And if you can't come, let us know now because so we can have somebody else fill it. And don't do it on Thursday because that, that'll piss me off. Okay? So onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon.